Good evening, everyone. My name is Phil Hartley. I'm the board chairperson for the Heart of Wisconsin. I'd like to welcome everyone to the 73rd Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Annual Meeting and Awards. First, I'd like to call together the 2020 menu. Wow, that's good and loud, huh? Hey, I'd like to say it's good to see uh, so many faces here tonight. In fact, honestly, it's good to see faces here tonight. <laughs> Hopefully we see more and more of them, right, over the next couple months and uh, as we get through this. In a few minutes, uh, obviously, uh, already, uh, you've started to receive your food, uh, the wonderful food from the Bridges Wait staff. They're serving the dinner right now. The program will begin in about 45 minutes. Uh, it includes highlights of 2020, our keynote speaker, and of course, the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce annual awards that we give out every year to some very deserving people and businesses from our community. At this time, I'd like the elected officials that are present uh, to please stand up, and specifically I want to thank them for attending our annual meeting. How about a big round of applause, please? There we go. Thank you for being here this evening. I'd also like to thank our sponsors for tonight's annual dinner, uh, including our presenting sponsor, Urco Worldwide, our annual dinner sponsors, Domtar, Enbridge, Ho-Chunk Gaming, and Nakusa, Media Works of Wisconsin, Paper City Savings, Solaris, Horton CPAs SC, Payroll and Bookkeeping LLC, the Wysocki family of companies, Metallico, and Anderson O'Brien. Yeah, big round of applause for all them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Phil. And on your table tonight, uh, I saw them passing it out just a few minutes ago, uh, a nice bottle of wine from our premier wine sponsor, Urco Worldwide. How about a big round of applause for them? Thanks, Erko. Once again, thanks everyone for being here. We'll get started in just a little while. Enjoy your evening, and then we'll be streaming the event tonight live for our virtual uh, attendees, and we'll be recording it so you can watch it at a later date as well. And as a note, uh, if you're leaving your table this evening at any time, please wear your face covering. Appreciate it, your diligence for doing that. Enjoy your meal, and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, good evening, everyone, once again. We were served. Uh, we were served our food a little early, so unless anybody has a big time complaint, we're going to start a little early. Everybody okay with that? Say aye. aye. There we go. I think the eyes have it. So, without any further ado, I want to introduce our master of ceremonies tonight, Mr. Mark Skiba. Thank you, Phil. And I would like to start the evening by introducing the staff from the part of Wisconsin. Uh, first, we have our president, Angel Whitehead. Angel, where are you? Way in the back there in the corner. Our vice president, Chris DeCoon. Our engagement director, Carrie Schwingle. And welcome our events and marketing director, Hannah Ashbeck. As many of you know, an organization such as a chamber cannot thrive without its volunteers. These volunteers are the heart and soul of the heart of Wisconsin. We would like to acknowledge our chamber ambassador group. If they can please stand. Chamber ambassadors. Thank you, Ambassadors. We'd also like to introduce the 2020 Board of Directors. Please stand to be recognized when you hear your name. Our Chairperson, Phil Hartley from Bank Account Corporation. The Vice Chair, Craig Bernstein from Mid-State Technical College. Our Governance Chairperson, Alex Hewitt from Nash Law Group. Our treasurer is still uh, Jill Steckbauer from Mid-State Technical College Foundation. And uh, our board of directors, uh, Nate Weidman from Next Home Partners. Jill Dillon from Marshfield Clinic. 
Why don't we hold our applause till we hear see all of them, okay? Uh, Janine Malcolm from Mary Kay Cosmetics. John Preuss from M3 Insurance. Lisa Skiba with the Spirus. Jamie Giebert from the town of Rome. Sue Lindau. And Heather Gigi from US Bank. Thank you to our 2020 Board of Directors. We have two outgoing members, Heather Gigi, who is attending virtually, and Nate Weidman. We'd like to thank them for the past six years of service. They've been very involved, board members, supporting change, growth, and dedicating their time to furthering the prosperity of the community. Nate, if you would please come up and receive your award. Oh, it's on your table. Well, then don't come up, all right? <laughs> I just do as they tell me, Nate, usually. Okay. We would uh, like to welcome three new incoming board members. Patrick Gatterman from Northward Pedal and Paddle. Welcome, Patrick. Craig Broren from the Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools. And Craig Tim from Victor Communications, LLC. Let's give them a warm welcome. All right, it is now with great pleasure that I get to introduce our keynote speaker for this evening, Tom Gardner. Tom and his wife, Janine, operate Hay Creek Companies in Pittsville. They have four sons, ages 18 through 24. Hay Creek was started as an over-the-road trucking company in 1993. The company then became a pallet and recycling company in 2000. They produce new and used pallets, landscape mulch, animal bedding, and wood fuel pellets. Tom also was involved in the cranberry growing operation and cranberry processing with his brother Butch. Hay Creek's mission statement is striving to honor God in all we do, helping people develop, pursuing excellence while growing profitably. Tom has a heart for serving and growing people and wants to see business thrive. Please welcome Tom Gardner. Thank you. I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and talk to you tonight. Um, I always like it when a speaker challenges us, and so my speech I hope is challenging to you tonight and what I have to say. Um, I want to share with you how changing my focus has changed my life. So what will you change in your business right now to make your future better? As Mark said, we are from Pittsville and, and own a small business there. Um, we started out in, uh, I started out in, uh, just out of high school, driving a truck over the road. And in 1985, I bought a truck, and that was my introduction into the business world. I didn't have an MBA. Um, I was pretty happy just to get out of high school, and I hit the road <clears throat> doing that. And uh, it, it was quite an experience. Got married in 1994 to my wife, Janine. And uh, as we got married, we thought about having a family. And I was over the road, and she was at home, and so... That probably wasn't going to work out real well if we were going to have kids for me to be gone and her to be at home. So we went on the road together and uh, <clears throat> we weren't able to uh, we weren't able to have kids. So she just she uh, went to the went to the doctor. Doctor said there's no problem with her. So then I was next in line. <clears throat> wasn't real crazy about that, but I went and uh, the doctor advised that I would have a surgery to be able to have kids. Um, he said that after I had the surgery, there'd be about a 40% chance that we would ever have children. You can imagine my joy on the very day that I was to have the surgery, we found out we were pregnant. <laughs> I was overjoyed. Um, everything was rolling along pretty good. We were happily married, about to have a family. And uh, about 23 weeks into the pregnancy, I got a phone call while I was on the road. She said, Donnie, I, I got to go to the hospital. Something ain't right. So I turned around and went back. And uh, at 24 weeks, our 
first child was born. He was one pound, four and a half ounces. Um, so things were a little tough starting a business, um, <clears throat> being on the road and now having to adjust to life at home to be with my wife. Um, we continued to expand the business because I wasn't one for sitting around. Um, our son was in neonatal intensive care and it was touch and go. It was twice that I remember going into neonatal intensive care and the intensive care nurse was standing over our son crying because she didn't think he was going to make it through the night. So things were pretty tough on that startup. But on the business front, I continued to grow that, added more trucks, uh, started in the cranberry business that same year with my brother and my father and another partner. And then as things progressed, we... Uh, we started it, started the pallet business. I had uh, everything we did was kind of out of necessity. We had uh, at that time we were exchanging pallets on the on the stuff we were hauling with the trucks, and we had to repair those pallets. And so you would take take the trucks in and with an empty set of pallets, and they put the load on their pallets. And so you were exchanging anyway. I found a customer that needed repaired pallets, and I had a customer that needed to get rid of some pallets. Um, one thing led to another. And pretty soon I was out looking for pallets because there was a demand. I couldn't find enough pallets to repair. So we started making new pallets. And all along, at the same time, we're developing this waste stream that's coming off the repaired pallets and the junk pallets. I had a mountain. <clears throat> the mountain was a problem. So we hauled the mountain out back and started that on fire. And that didn't go too good. <clears throat> we burned up a lot more than we were supposed to. So we had to come up with a solution for that. So that solution was to, to start, a, got a grinder and started a grinding operation. So we ground the pallets up and started making an, uh, landscape mulch. And then about that, at the end of the landscape mulch season, because that was short, April to July, we started uh, grinding a little finer and making animal bedding. So <clears throat> one thing led to another and eventually the business grew enough that we ran out of space at the facility we were at. And so in 2014, we expanded the operation and moved to what's now the uh, our facility in Pittsville. It was uh, Pittsville Homes. Um, what I found out from being in business that money doesn't necessarily equal success. So what happens when the funds aren't there? What's truly driving me and, and my business? As entrepreneurs, we fill a need, we we find a need and we fulfill it, and we serve our customers. Everything we've done is out of out of a need for someone else. Another uh, definition I've heard of an entrepreneur is the entrepreneur gets the rewards that no one else gets for doing the, the work that no one else wants to do. Zig Ziglar once said, you can get anything you want if you help enough other people get what they want. We've gone through some pretty rough spots and uh, working, out of, working a business out of a checkbook isn't always the best way to run a business. There's money in the account, you're doing good, and if there's not, you have to change something. So in 2011, I was going through a particularly rough time in the business. I spent, started to spend a little more time in prayer. And uh, for some reason, I felt a calling to go into full-time ministry. And as I prayed through that, what's that look like? Do I sell the business? Am I doing what God's really calling me to do? Um, my wife had bought me a subscription to World Magazine. And as I flipped through World Magazine, I found out about a group called C12. Months went by and the agony didn't seem to go away. And I finally picked up the call and phone and called the C12. And they said, uh, we have a new group starting in central Wisconsin. So I visited the group and uh, joined the C12 group. It's 12 Christian business guys that get together every month. What I learned from C12 is that I was really in full-time ministry and I didn't know it. So having the, <clears throat> having the right focus really does matter. As I learned that money was not the true gauge of success, but I needed to focus on people. Sometimes when we're in business, we feel like we're alone. We're making, uh, making decisions. Uh, we don't have don't always have counsel of other like-minded peers, and uh, the world looks at things a little different when you're uh, when you're signing the back of the check and when you're signing the front of the check. 
uh, my C12 group really became my counsel. Uh, even though we were all in different businesses, we were all doing dealing with the same kind of issues. And a lot of them had to do with people. The good thing about the C12 group was we took one month or one day out of the month to work on the business instead of just in the business. I'd never done that before. And <clears throat> there was many times in my life where I felt like the business was running me instead of me running the business. So many of us go into business to supposedly get rich or to make money. And what I found out was we're really in business to enrich other, enrich other people's lives. So we rewrote our mission statement, which is, as we shared before, striving to honor God in all we do, helping people develop, pursuing excellence, all while growing profit, profitably. We rewrote our core values of caring, honesty, respect, integrity, social responsibility, and thankfulness. And this is a reflection of how we do business and how we care for our employees which are our greatest asset. We decided that if we were going to live up to those core values, we really needed to see people differently. Investing in people is a ministry, and I learned that you don't have to be a pastor to lead and equip people. Leadership is a ministry because we invest in people. One of the first things we did as a C12 group is we signed on, signed on with Corporate Chaplains of America. We have a great corporate chaplain. His name is Trey Turner. He comes to visit once a week. And uh, the employees have an opportunity to talk with Trey, uh, pray with Trey. He's a pastor, of course. Build relationships. And Trey is there at our beck and call, basically. <clears throat> It's been said that people have a crisis in their life about once every six months. I think sometimes we have employees, and especially the bell business, I think we have a crisis about once every six days. <clears throat> sometimes that's me having that crisis. Uh, you know, in the old days, when people went to church and they had a pastor, they had somebody they could confide in. Many times we don't have that in our in our society today, and. People are dealing with a lot of stuff in the last year. The next thing we did is we had an opportunity to form a caring team. Uh, people really don't know how much you know, don't care about how much you know until you know, they know how much you care. So one of the things that we do is our <clears throat> with our caring team, which was set up through a company that I found through C12 called His Way at Work. Um, so the caring team helps to care for our employees. And uh, we find that when we see people differently, we see people in a different light, they begin to see each other in a different light and they wanna help each other. Our caring team consists of five or six people from different areas of the com company. Uh, they meet bi-weekly and they're given a budget and they can make loans to employees. Sometimes as employers, we have employees coming to us for loans. And <clears throat> sometimes as a boss, I, I have, a, have a tender spot for people. And the cool thing is there's more accountability with my employees amongst my employees and uh, than there is sometimes with me because I'm busy yet. <clears throat> need to move on to the next thing. And the caring team really, uh, really solidifies what we're all about. They also help out in the community. So as businesses, we have people coming to us to make donations to certain things, and I get to give that to my caring team, and they get to make those decisions. As an owner, I'm on the team, but I don't I don't have the final say. I can give them some guidance, but I don't have the final say. <clears throat> the team encourages employees and creates the opportunity for employers, for the employees to build community. We have a lot of fun at work. Sometimes as an owner, it's not always fun, but <clears throat> we look for ways to celebrate. Um, some of the things that we, we do is on, on Wednesdays, and we just did that today, we have a weekly lunch and learn. 
which we provide the meal or the caring team provides the meal. Um, and basically it's a, it's a Bible study at work. It's, it's amazing how lives of people are changed when they've never really stepped foot into a church, but they get to hear the stories of the gospel. <clears throat> of course, it's optional. Nobody's coerced or forced to be there. I mean, we do things like get together as a group um, for a Raptors game. We're just always looking for things to things to celebrate and, and ways to uh, to lift each other up. Um, one of the things we're doing this week is Friday is Employee Appreciation Day. We work four tens, and so tomorrow we're celebrating Employee Appreciation Day. One of the guys knows somebody that's got an ice cream machine. <clears throat> we brought it in last year for the Fourth of July and or the Third of July, Second and Third of July. So we just do things like that. Another thing that we implemented this year is we had an auction around the holidays, of just kind of fun things that people tease each other about. We had one particular guy that was really vocal about who he supported during the election. So they wrapped up a sign of the opposing uh, politician. And <clears throat> when we had the auction, we made sure that he got the high bid on that. <clears throat> so that was kind of fun. But one of the things that they did is they I, I didn't realize it was valuable for them to spend time with me as an owner. And so we, they auctioned off um, a lunch, lunch date with me. And I thought, well, I, did, I just didn't think it was that big a deal, but the employees seemed to think that was a pretty big deal. So we started Tuesdays with Tom. So every Tuesday, I take one of my people out to eat in Pittsville. And if any of you have been to Pittsville, it has to be the cheapest place in the state to eat. <laughs> they got $2 burgers at Horse and Round Saloon on Tuesdays, and that's where my people like to go. I can't beat it. <clears throat> um, but they're, you know, it's, it's just great. We, we go to lunch, and it's not an interview. It's not me quizzing them. It's not a, a progress report. It's like anything that they want to talk about. And uh, one of the things that was concerning to my employees is they didn't understand where we were going as a company. And so I get to share my vision for the future of the company. But I also get to spend time with them and see what their vision is for their families and for their for their for their futures. So it's been it's been really rewarding to be able to take that time to go to lunch with my with my people. So I just finished that one of the I think it was the eighth or ninth one on Tuesday, and and uh, my employees said, "Well, I got 42 employees. We'll see you in 42 weeks." So they're they're looking forward to it, and I and so am I. One of the things the caring team does is they have a, a feature called Caught You Caring. So if you get caught upholding one of the company values, um, you know, they're doing things for each other, whether they're jump starting the car. One guy gave another guy a, a, a set of tires for his pickup truck. Um, I had a lady in town that needed some help moving some furniture, and there was a cross from to where two of my employees were living and and I and she wanted to get rid of this chair and I said to the employee I said hey you know could you use this chair he said well I could but you know Jerry that I work with he gave me a couch and a chair last week so I don't need one well the other employee he decided he'd take the chair so it's kind of kind of cool when you hear when you see your employees helping each other out um, it really reinforces our values and kind of uh, builds camaraderie in the team Everybody struggles to find good people, as do we. And, and I've heard business owners, and it's kind of disappointing when you hear them say, well, there's no good people left out there to hire. What I feel about that statement is it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And any of us that hire people know that it is tough to hire people. <clears throat> Absolutely, it's tough to hire people. And we think that maybe by bringing better pay, you'll get better people. Not necessarily. It helps. We have to be competitive on our wages. But people don't always work for a paycheck. They want to be part of something bigger. One of the things, a quote I heard just recently is, a, a person who feels appreciated will always do more than expected. <clears throat> when people come through the doors at our company, we want to leave, help them become better fathers, better husbands, better wives, better mothers. And then the question has come up in the past, what if I invest in my people and they leave? 
really, I needed to ask myself, what if I don't invest in them and they stay? <clears throat> it's really not an either or. I look at it as there's really no other, no other option. One of the things that we were encouraged to do in uh, C12, because we have monthly segments and we're learning every month, we read a book by uh, Patrick Lencioni called The Ideal Team Player. I think it's one of Patrick's best books, but he's written a lot of good ones. But what we found was the ideal team player is humble, is hungry, and smart. Humble is they want to learn, and they don't have a, the attitude that they have all the answers. Hungry, they want to learn, and they want to do more and grow. Smart, not as IQ, but as EQ. They have good emotional intelligence. They know how others think and feel and how what they say and do affects those around them. It's in a, an emotional or uh, yeah, an emotional maturity. We use this all the time in our interviews. Matter of fact, I, I had one today, and we asked people coming in the door to to uh, rate themselves. You know, which which one of these is your strongest? What we found is our using this as a hiring guideline has really changed everything. The chances of success for new hires has greatly increased. Uh, new hires that had these qualities it really added to the culture and helped build the team. So as we look at what it looks like to be humble, hungry, and smart, um, it has really made a difference in, in, in waiting until the right people come along. Sometimes we are got our back against the wall and we, we need somebody to, to do the work that we need to do, and so we take the, the next body that walks in the door. And uh, we've had to be patient and wait for, the, wait for the right people. Sometimes it does take a while. The light bulb moment for me in all of that was as a leader, I needed to be the first to emulate those, those qualities and lead by example. <clears throat> There's times when I have to let my guard down, even though I'm the owner and I'm the boss, and let my, team, my leadership team challenge me and call me out if I'm not living up to those to those qualities, <clears throat> and point that out to me. Um, success really rides on leadership. It's it isn't only about finding the right people; it's about being the right leader. <clears throat> we improve the we improve the culture of the business by hiring great people. We have fun at work. We try to celebrate things, celebrate each other. And it all starts with the leadership. <clears throat> I, I heard recently that said that the attitude of the ship is di a direct reflection in the attitude of the captain. I read in a pallet trade magazine, management without leading leaves your team without direction. Characteristics of a, a effective leadership is that they engage and inspire about where they're going and why. Highly engaged people produce great results and they positively impact others. We need to set the example by walking the walk and not asking others to do what we wouldn't do ourselves. We build trust and respect through our integrity. Nobody respects hypocrisy. We ask questions to understand. We learn rather than assuming, rather than assuming we know it all, <clears throat> which we never do. We want others to practice seeking first to understand and then be understood. Practice openness, authenticity. It increases our self-awareness, opens the door to growth and development, builds trust and safety to others that do the same. We have to acknowledge our mistakes and we all make them. Apologize for wrong actions and make things right with others. We build trust and respect it will honestly make your culture very special. One of the things that I've had to learn in the last year is to calm down when I'm emotionally triggered, either upset or happy, because strong emotions cloud rational thinking. It calls impulse, impulsive acts. <clears throat> hold yourself accountable and then hold others accountable. People learn and grow and thrive when they take ownership. Individual, individuals and organizations are harmed when they don't. 
management is about things rather than people, or leadership is about people. People ultimately have free will. You don't control them. You influence them, which is leadership. Leaders need to know where they're going. <clears throat> Quote I like from Jonathan Smith from 1699 was, Vision is the art of seeing the invisible. It's been a really tough year for a lot of us in business. The word picture that keeps coming up, if you remember from the movie, uh, Forrest Gump, Captain Dan shows up. This start to be Forrest's first mate on the shrimping boat. And uh, didn't start out too good. They weren't catching much. And then the storm comes. And I know a lot of us are in business. We feel like Captain Dan. And we're just screaming out, is this all you got? You're just kind of day by day going through the, mo going through the motions. And we find our strength in our trials. Others of us have probably had good years for business. Depends on what kind of business you're in. Depends on if you are online or not. Depends on if you are able to pivot, go in a different direction. I, my heart was breaking for the restaurants a year ago when the week of uh, St. Patrick's Day, when the governor closed all the restaurants. Can you imagine the people that were out of business and the food that went to waste because the restaurants couldn't sell that food? <clears throat> it was... Uh, it was a tough time, and it's been a tough year. Some of you might feel like it's been the west, worst year of your life. You don't know how much longer you can hold on. I'm here to today to say don't give up. Better days are ahead. As a Christian-run business, I feel compelled to share God has a bigger plan for your life. He has a bigger plan for your business. As Christian businesses, we share share the Word of God. One of the things that we do is I have with me a pocket testament. And basically, it's got my company name on the front of it. It's got our philosophy about business. Got our core values, our mission statement in it. And in between are the three questions that everybody must ask. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? it's changed my life. It's changed my business. It's, it's changed my why in, in, in what I'm doing. And I feel compelled to share his story. I do have a copy of this for anybody that wants one. And if you want to take one home, you want to give it away, I'd be delighted to give you as many copies as, as you need. So in summary, money doesn't equal success. Having the right focus is really what matters. Investing in people is a ministry. Success really rides on leadership. Leaders need to know where they're going. So where are you going next in your business? What are you doing right now to make sure that you have the right focus? Instead of waiting for the right break to come, let's focus on what what we can do right now. I had to make a radical change in how I ran my business. That was risky. I'm asking you to take a risk. Will you change your focus to put people first? Will you invest in your people? Will you become a better leader? Will you establish a vision in a new direction. Only you know what your next action step will be. But if you're bold enough to take it, that step could change your life, change your business, and it could change the lives of everyone on your team. Thank you. Thank you, John. So many individuals and businesses give everything they can to make our community a better place to live. We are honored to be in a room full of those individuals tonight. Before we begin our awards for this evening, we want to take a moment to give special recognition to a group of dedicated community leaders.
The Wood County Health Department works tirelessly every year. The program support and guidance your organization provides the community is crucial. COVID made those efforts even harder. The leadership that their staff provided during the last year was nothing short of incredible. A single recognition cannot show the appreciation we have for you and all of the staff. Let's have a big round of applause for the Wood County. Thank you so much. All right, if you uh, receive an award tonight, unless you are going to come forward to say something, we are going to make sure that you pick up your award after the ceremony because of a COVID pro protocol. And then you'll also be able to get your picture taken at the same time, so. Our first recognition tonight is our Professional Growth Award. It's sponsored by the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Marshfield campus and is given to an individual who shows community service and leadership while demonstrating outstanding volunteer spirits and makes a significant impact in the community. This award winner has been involved with many organizations and events. They have volunteered their time and talent whenever possible. They are inclusive, thoughtful, and creative. They are resourceful when planning events and bringing people together. Because of their network and the number of people they know, they can always find the right people to contact. This person was instrumental in bridging the Wisconsin Rapids Young Professionals Group, current to the larger Wisconsin Young Professionals community and the Newwaukee Network. A highlight from a few years ago, current partnered with the Bright Star Foundation and the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation to host a hatch event, which put this area on the map as a place where young people are moving to and engaging in their community. One of 24 young professional groups in Wisconsin, Current aims to connect and engage young people and their families in the Wisconsin Rapids area to contribute to a vibrant community. They work collaboratively with many different businesses to host engaging and educational events. Although 2020 was quieter than normal for Current, they have done so much for this community and organization. Events hosted by Current that have been involved in are 20 different socials, tours, and panel discussions at various locations since 2016. Spring Clean, Hatch, Moscow Mule Tasting, Paddle Fest, Bingo and Tacos, River Kings, and a Rafter Sponsorship, Tunes for Two, Roasting Demo and Coffee Tasting, Learning How to Curl, Trivia, and Downtown on Tap. This person is the definition of a young professional and is very deserving to be the first ever Professional Growth of the Year Award winner. We are excited to announce this year's winner is Jenna Moran. Jenna has been involved in being a member of the Local Young Professionals Group Current since January 2016 and currently serves as president. She served on the Family Center Board as a member from 2018 and 19. She served on the Heart of Wisconsin Promote Committee since June 2018. She completed the Heart of Wisconsin Community Leadership Program and was part of the project group that brought the new city of Wisconsin Rapids welcome signs. Jenna has a passion for marketing and communications in her career. She's worked for Encourage, Mid-State Technical College, and currently finds herself at Delta Dental of Wisconsin as a marketing and communications specialist. Jenna's a Rudolph native, Assumption High School and UW-La Crosse graduate. We are fortunate she has chosen to come back to her hometown to be a part of this great community. Let's have another round of applause for Jenna Moran. kind of hope she would. Yes. yes, this is a surprise. I thought I was presenting the award. <laughs> so, um, you know, you are as good as the people you surround yourself, uh, surround yourself with. And I'm just incredibly fortunate to have two of those people at my table currently. 
and um, another two, Kitty Corner, who are my parents. So whoever did this, thank you so much. You know, I'm, I'm just surrounded by an incredible team of people. So it's always a team effort and I appreciate it so much. <laughs> thank you. Now it's time for our Chamber, Chamber Champion Award, sponsored by Crockett Septic. And it recognizes an individual or individuals that go above and beyond to assist the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce with promotion, events, and support. And with their efforts, time, funds, and support to the Chamber, the award winners have been a long-standing community member and a staple to the Heart of Wisconsin area for many years. Both individuals have been longtime employees in the area and have owned their own businesses in previous years. The couple has been married since 1985 and have one son, Miles, who is married to Lindsay and has two grandsons. As community members, Dale and Pam Bowden see the importance of the chamber and the impact the organization can make in the community. They continue to go above and beyond to assist the heart of Wisconsin and the community. They have a passion for this community and seeing families make memories is important to them. Just to name a few of the organizations and events they have been involved in, Wisconsin Kiters, American Kite Flyers Association, Kites Over Lake Michigan, Kites Over Winona, the Pittsville Fun Fly, Patriot Guard Riders, the WIARNG Explorers, Post 120 Green Dragons, Cranberry Blossom Fest, Downtown Grand Affair, Rekindle the Spirit, and Nakusa Hometown Christmas. The Explorers was a Boy Scout program in conjunction with the Wisconsin Army National Guard. It was held on the 120th Field Artillery's headquarters in Wisconsin Rapids. And the program was a statewide that was aimed at giving kids an idea of what they could expect in the military and to help promote leadership qualities in their everyday life. Loyalty, duty, respect, Selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage were the staple for the program. Their son was a cadet in this post. The program lost support from the National Guard, and seeing it as it was something Dale knew was valuable and the other kids enjoyed, he took over as the leader. Dale kept the Wisconsin Rapids post alive for several years. Pam and Dale coordinated events for the kids that were still in the post, such as providing night security for the Wisconsin Water Ski Show. It was a highly anticipated event for the kids every year. The Iola Military Show, overnight stays at the Wisconsin Maritime Museum, where the kids got to spend the night in the USS Cobia submarine, amongst other trips. Pam and Dale also drive an army truck through the surrounding area parades, giving veterans a ride through the parade. The chamber has been privileged to have Pam and Dale, also known as Mr. and Mrs. Claus, at Rekindle the Spirit for many years, along with Makusa hometown Christmas events. In the past few years, they have assisted in Santa visits in Riverside Park, when they were no longer other Santa visit locations. You may also have seen them as Gru and the Minion and the Easter Bunny in events in the community. We appreciate all they do for the heart of Wisconsin and the community. Dale and Pam Bowden, also known as Mr. and Mrs. Claus, are a truly amazing couple that spend countless hours volunteering their time to the community. They are very deserving to be this year's Chamber Champion. Please welcome up this year's Chamber Champions, Dale and Pam Bowden. Sincere way. All right, it is time for this year's Ambassador of the Year Award, and it's sponsored by Conexus Credit Union, promoting the Bullseye Legacy. This award is voted on by the Ambassador Group, and this year's recipient is a shining example of true dedication and commitment to our chamber. Ann Grinder has been involved with the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce for many years. She is a staple in the ambassador group and as a volunteer and has been fully committed to the chamber. Her energy and enthusiasm make people around her smile and her laugh is contagious. Anne is always willing to help with a variety of tasks that come up each year. She's been known to 
bring in the top sales for the Cranberry Cash tickets, and even selling quite a few lucky ones throughout the years. She loves to help at many events because it gives her another opportunity to connect with people and build relationships. We believe her favorite chamber event is the lucky Summer Hummer golf outing because of how much she loves to golf. In her free time, you can find her spending time with her family, playing cards and bingo and golfing. Her husband, Paul, passed a few years ago, but he was always at her side and watching down tonight. Please congratulate Anne on being the 2020 Ambassador of the Year. Our Community Spirit Award is sponsored by Wood Trust Bank and is given to groups or individuals who demonstrate outstanding volunteer spirit and make a significant impact in our community. This year's Community Spirit Award winner is Tammy Caspin. Tammy demonstrates outstanding volunteer spirit throughout the community. She impacts the community by hosting many fundraisers and gives back dollars to local causes. She never hesitates to keep those in need. Her dedication and passion for helping others are unmatched. This past spring, she came up with the idea of the Happy Healthcare Worker Baskets Program. It requested donations which provided snacks, drinks, treats, fruit, and breakfast items. And they put the baskets together and delivered them to over 600 workers. The baskets were delivered to the hospitals, clinics, assisted livings, nursing homes, and emergency services along with police and fire departments in the area. She said they were the ones on the very front lines of this pandemic, and I felt as though I needed to do something a little extra for them. So they knew that they were extremely appreciated and that they were not alone. Last April, she put together the Hippity Hoppity Trail just before Easter. She began thinking that COVID was taking away a lot, not only for adults, but children as well. She wanted to do something special to make something somewhat normal. With the help of her staff, friends, and family, they made a very COVID-friendly trail around the Accounting Plus building where parents could drive through with their children to receive a variety of candy and toys from their favorite cartoon characters. The Hippity Hoppity Trail saw 166 vehicles, bringing in about 500 children that day, creating new memories for the Easter season. Last winter, her staff and she worked together with some of the community members to put on not only one, but two donation drives for Toys for Tots. During these drives, they would pass out free lunch and people would donate toys for children who are not as fortunate as others. They also collected non-perishable food items for sweats during these donation drives. Altogether, they filled over 10 toy boxes and were able to donate over 1,000 pounds of food to the food pantries in our community. Just before Christmas, she organized Sweets with Santa and partnered with Layla's Pub. They had Santa come out with some of her elves, passing out treats and hot cocoa with a fun photo opportunity for the kids and families. They had over 100 people attend, and the money donated was given to Sweps. Her most recent adventure was Valentine's Day deliveries. She and her staff and friends made gift bags and bouquets of flowers for the elderly people in the nursing homes. She thought to do this because she can only imagine how alone it can feel in those homes and know how much worse it must be when they are unable to see their families. Tammy is well deserving of the Community Spirit Award on behalf of the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce and the entire community. Thank you for your involvement and dedication to our community. Tammy, congratulations on your Community Spirit Award. I'd like to thank um, everybody that made this award possible. Um, I'm especially thankful to my hostage volunteers, otherwise known as my employees, my family, and my friends. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without them at all. Um, I have always been especially thankful to this community for supporting Accounting Plus and myself. 
and allowing my business to be the success it is today. I think we would all like to look at ourselves as business people and think how, look how far we have come. But remember, without our customers, clients, colleagues, employees, you would be just another striving success. I encourage everyone in this room to give back to the community that has made us who and what we are today. To think back on my childhood, to be in the one that needed help, to now be in the one who can help those in needs is to me my greatest accomplishment. I would encourage everyone in this room to try every day to give back to your community, pay it forward, pay it back, do what you can to support the people that have supported you and made you who you are. Thank you again. Now it's time for this year's Shining Star Award, which is sponsored by Encourage. The Shining Star recognizes a service organization or public institution. Their dedication to community service, leadership, innovative programs, and services to adapt to the changing community needs. This year's Shining Star is the Wisconsin Rapids Community Theater. They've been providing quality live performing arts and opportunities for all community members to participate in for 46 years. Pandemic has created some financial challenges, but they have received tremendous support from their Ghost Seat Sponsor Program, the Heart of Wisconsin Charity Drive, and federal and state grants. They have not stopped working during this time, working on improving their theater through upgrades, providing performing arts for our community with new safety guidelines being the foundation for all productions. Zoom Summer Youth Program, that was June through August, Live Halloween Creep Theater, filmed virtual production of A Christmas Carol for the holidays, and participated in the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce, Rekindle the Spirit, and the Coosa Area Hometown Christmas. They are a year-round business with schedules that include four main stage productions, three youth productions, two Silver Fox Senior Theater productions, a Haunted House Creep Theater, multiple fundraising events, and a cabaret series including After Hours, Cocktails, and Live Music. Their upcoming filmed virtual production of Winter Frost will be a free show for the community to be aired on local TV and YouTube this coming April as a way to give back to our community and brighten spirits during the continual pandemic. They plan to begin to provide live performances to live audiences again this May 2021. To accept the Shining Star Nonprofit Award, please welcome Tim Young. Hello, everybody. I ran up here because I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but thank you so much to this wonderful community. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. To all of our uh, business sponsors, a lot of them are here tonight. And all of our, I see a lot of community members who have also helped us throughout the year. Thank you so much. Uh, also, our board of directors, two of our board members are here, Michael Barrett and Chris Williams. Thank you. Um, thank you to all of our patrons that continued and our, and our participants that continued to participate in our productions during a pandemic. We were, we're grateful to have such a, a, a great group of participants uh, who are very excited. But our mission at WRCT is to encourage community collaboration and well-being through the performing arts. So if you could, for one second, could everybody please stand up? And at this time, if it wasn't for the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Ridges and other organizations helping make this night uh, special for us, can we, Joe, can you pan out at the group? Can everybody uh, please at this time on the count of three, wave at Joe, and say thank you, Joe, from the Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. One, two, three. Thank you, Joe. Thanks again for the award. We're really happy to receive it. Thank you. I was watching to see which way you went, Tim. If you went back to your seat or 
<laughs> Make sure to wash your hands when you do that. It's time for this year's Homegrown Product or Service Award. It is sponsored by the Wisconsin Rapids Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. The Homegrown Product or Service Award recognizes a business or product service produced and must be dedicated to customer service, community service, and leadership. This year's winner is nothing short of amazing. Cold Snap Aquaponics and founder Pamela Walker. Pam and her husband Ryan have two sons and daughters-in-law and six grandchildren. Ryan is a fifth generation cranberry grower Together, they harvest cranberries for the fresh fruit market through handler Ocean Spray Cranberries. Pam, a science teacher, business owner, and stands on the cutting edge of aquaponic agriculture in the Badger State. Cold Snap is a family-owned and operated aquaponics alternative farming system located in Wisconsin Rapids. The company takes pride in producing eco-friendly, sustainably sourced organic produce year-round to central Wisconsin and surrounding areas. Cold Snap takes a 21st century agricultural approach to producing greens, veggies, and fish in a simple closed loop system that is ecologically sound. Their 10,000 foot greenhouse provides a year round growing environment with harvesting happening 365 days per year. They don't use pesticides, herbicides, or commercial fertilizers in their production system, making their products all natural and chemical free. In addition to growing 90,000 heads of lettuce, spinach, microgreens, tomatoes, cucumbers, kohlrabi, and other shallow root veggies, Cold Snap has partnerships with local schools, hospitals, restaurants, and grocery stores to provide them with fresh produce. Of course, some of those partnerships disappeared overnight with COVID-19. And Pam says, when your client's enterprises close, you have to find alternative markets quickly. They had three school districts that closed in March as soon as COVID hit, and she scrambled to develop other sales avenues. She offered delivery to employees in their workplace. Neighbors in the township had home delivery services, and she began vending online. She also connected with emerging food deliveries from other small businesses to provide local food purchase options. Despite those challenges, Pam still takes time to pay attention to what is happening in state and local government, saying she tries to understand who influences farming efforts, particularly 21st century non-traditional pursuits. The local food movement, she explains, includes Know Your Farmer, Farm to Table, and a network of resources responding to consumers' desire to purchase safe, local, healthy food. The inventiveness of an undertaking like controlled environmental agriculture, the high quality of the produce, and that her grandchildren understand food production is a process from seed to harvest. They help feed the fish, plant the lettuce, and cut a snack if hungry. Cold Snap uses organic growing techniques and is a safe place to have grandchildren eating from the garden. In her free time, Pam says she likes traveling, quilting, and gardening. Although she is a lifelong resident of Wisconsin, she said there are still places she's yet to discover, and she loves to jump in the car for a road trip whenever her schedule allows. She loves the Badger Sticks. Please join me in congratulating Pamela Walker on the 2020 Homegrown Products Service Award of the Year. Good evening. Um, I'd like to thank the people who nominated me for this award. Uh, it's been a labor of pure love. Um, I never expected that we would be standing here in front of an audience because normally I am in the greenhouse um, feeding fish or coaxing plants to grow. Um, and I also want to thank some of the people that are here tonight that are my support crew. I never um, anticipated this endeavor without the inclusion of my family. So um, my son Tyler and his wife Amanda are here along with my grandson, Liam, who um, ironically, when we were building this, uh, it comes in 279 burlap bags. 
uh, tied together and it seemed to be the biggest Lego um, kit we had ever seen. And Liam is very good at Legos. So he was putting things together <laughs> quicker than grandma could do it. Um, so I appreciate all of his help. Uh, Isley, who is my four-year-old almost, um, is my connoisseur of cucumbers. And she's in the greenhouse. The first thing she does besides feed the fish is she sources out the cucumbers because she eats them all the time. And between the two of them, they also have raided um, the kale bed. Uh, I've never seen kids eat raw kale, but they do. And so that was exciting. Uh, my incentive for getting involved in this was really an education piece. Um, besides the fact that I missed green lettuce in February in Wisconsin, I can now say my best revenge is eating lettuce in February in Wisconsin that grows just next door. And um, it's fresh and it's good and, and I love growing it um, and I love my greenhouse. Um, we've extended that out of the education piece and I, I entertain um, not only my grandchildren's uh, classes that come out to visit, but also we um, entertain high school students and college students to come out and see what a 21st century um, agricultural endeavor looks like. It's very different than the farms that Wisconsin is familiar with. Um, I also would not um, <laughs> want to miss the, the biggest person in my life, which is my husband, Ryan, who um, three weeks ago, among other things, you know, he, he fixes everything. He talks me through some of the things when I have to deal with machines, which are not my favorite. Um, but we had a, a furnace go down on the night that it was 35 below zero. Um, and in a lettuce in, environment, I, I have to keep the temperature warm and the fish have to stay happy. Um, and he volunteered to sleep in a greenhouse for three nights until um, we could install a new furnace. Thank you, Tri-City. Um, and he, uh, we have a backup that's wood heat. So he was stoking the fire throughout the night so everything stayed warm. If you um, talk to any of your children or your students that happen to come home, um, when we look at a farm to fork um, relationship, it means that I can come in and show you what we've grown and it's picked right out of my garden just two hours prior to delivery. Um, I have to also thank Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools for staying with me. Uh, when COVID hit, we were scrambling trying to figure out what to do and they were inventive enough to have a food program with their students throughout the summer. So we did a partnership where we were able to provide the lettuce that went home to um, students. And that was a good use of our resources and a great use for them to showcase yet another um, fresh and local environment. Thank you again, appreciate the award. Our award for Entrepreneur Small Business of the Year is sponsored by Mid-State Technical College. The Entrepreneur of the Year recognizes a business who has initiated economic growth, community service, and leadership, innovative efforts used to adapt to marketplace change. Starting a business takes passion and dedication. Brett Roberts opened Roberts Physical Therapy, his first location in Wisconsin Rapids in 2005. He will be celebrating 16 years in May. He became a member in 2006. Brett Roberts, DPT, is the president of Roberts Physical Therapy and Inertia Solutions. Dr. Roberts received a Doctor of Physical Therapy from Evidence in Motion in 2011, a Master of Physical Therapy from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 2002, and a Bachelor of Arts in Biology from Augustana College in 2000. Dr. Roberts was one of, a first, uh, one of the first physical therapists in the state that pursued advanced training in the technique of trigger point dry needling from Connecticut. TDN is a technique that assists patients in overcoming chronic trigger points that feed into conditions such as low back pain and neck pain. Dr. Roberts has also pursued advanced training in the manual medicine track at Michigan State University College of Osteopathic Medicine. Additionally, he has pursued training in aquatic therapy, industrial ergonomics, and various sports medicine techniques. Professionally, Dr. Roberts serves as the Legislative Committee Chair for the Wisconsin Physical Therapy Association. 
He also served as the chair for the WPTA Private Practice Special Interest Group from 2015 to 2018. In 2010, he was named an emerging leader by the American Physical Therapy Association. Dr. Roberts is also a member of the private practice section of APTA. Dr. Roberts is also one of the founding members of Connects Care. Connects Care is changing the conversation about muscular skeletal health care. They're bypassing the complexity and cost of traditional medical models by building a trusted and affordable alternative delivery system that includes prevention, primary physical therapy care, rehabilitation, and more. Whether at home, work, school, or traveling, they provide convenient access to cost-effective world-class services, and that's what we're talking about. When not helping patients to maximize their ability to move, Brett enjoys spending time with his wife Becky and daughters Grace and Kaylin. He is a weekend warrior who enjoys bike riding, auto racing, contact sports, and cheering on the Badgers. Since 2015, Dr. Roberts has ridden annually across the state of Iowa and other distance biking events, helping Dr. Roberts to get moving, keep moving, and enjoy life. Dr. Roberts grew from one location to four. The locations he added are Amherst, Plainfield, and La Crosse. He recently purchased a building and is renovating it on A Street. He's always had a strong sense of how healthcare should be delivered. It should be personal and geared around the individual needs of the patient. Because of that desire, he created an environment in which patients could receive the care they deserve from highly skilled physical therapists. Opening Robert's Physical Therapy helped to accomplish that goal. He enjoys being a part of the Southwood County region and looks forward to continuing to help people to get moving, keep moving, and enjoy life. This year's Entrepreneur of the Year goes to Brett Roberts and Roberts Physical Therapy. <clears throat> like the late, great Jerry Garcia once said, man, what a long, strange trip it's been. This isn't about me, this is actually about my Rapids team, and I'd like to actually recognize them just a little bit. Dr. Carl DeLuca, would you please stand up? Carl is our physical therapist here in Wisconsin Rapids, also serves as a wrestling coach. Amy Blanchard, please stand up. Amy is our patient care coordinator. She's a friendly voice that you hear every time you call us. And Heather Carter, please stand up. Heather is our HR and marketing specialist. It's been crazy. You know, I, I think back to all the people in the community that have taken that risk if you want to look at it, and going to kind of a small unknown company that started on the corner of uh, 12th and Pepper Avenue. It's been a lot of fun. And without everybody, you know, kind of supporting us along the way, we wouldn't be here today. So I don't really have a lot to say other than just, I appreciate it. We're very humbled by this. Thank you. The award for Innovative Business of the Year is sponsored by Mid-State Technical College. This year's Innovative Business has invested in new processes, demonstrated commitment to new products or services, and created an organizational culture of innovation. In 2019, ND Paper announced it will strategically inject investment capital to improve the asset quality of its mill in Wisconsin. They strive to be a leading North American producer of pulp and paper products. A strategic modernization of mill assets will ensure the facility can operate efficiently for decades to come. By focusing on high return strategic investments, they are building world-class first quartile mills that deliver innovative, high quality products for their customers. The vision is to transform the Beeren Division into a world-class facility that is sustainable for the next 100 years. The Beeren Division has commissioned several major projects at a cost of $189 million. These investments will preserve and sustain the jobs of the 350 employees who currently work at the mill, while the mill enhancements will add 27 additional jobs. Planned projects consist of conversion of the B25 paper machine to container board products, and construction of a greenfield recycled pulp facility. 
These investments ensure the ND Paper team can operate these mills safely, efficiently, and sustainably now and into the future, and reinforces ND Paper's commitment to its core customers and the economic viability of the communities it serves. ND has made a huge commitment, and they look forward to seeing them grow. We look forward to seeing them grow in the future. Congratulations to this year's Innovative Business of the Year, ND Papers. Now, ND Papers was unable to attend this year, so they have a short acceptance video. Now it's time for the award for Regional Economic Impact of the Year. It's sponsored by ERCO Worldwide. The organization must, uh, the organization or business must show significant regional growth and expansion of their business organization, show community service and leadership, use innovative efforts to adapt to marketplace change, and be a Heart of Wisconsin Chamber member. Solaris is Wisconsin Rapids high-speed internet, phone, and television solution provider. They currently serve over 15,000 homes and businesses throughout central Wisconsin and have recently expanded their service lineup to business security solutions and IT services. Solaris started as a telephone company in 1896 and has grown to be the largest independent telecommunications company in the state. This year, they will celebrate their 125th anniversary. For the past 10 years, they've been building a fiber network that could serve this community's broadband needs both today and well into the future. Fiber's upload capabilities are what makes it so critical in today's work and learn from home environments. Solaris is owned by local stockholders, approximately 1,000 people who live and work in this community. Solaris employs approximately 110 individuals. As a local company, they are committed to the economic vitality of our community and support many projects and nonprofit initiatives. In early December, they launched a Making Spirits Bright campaign that gave current customers, residential and business customers, a $50 holiday gift card and encouraged everyone to support their local business economy. This initiative was intended to be a thank you to their customers. However, it demonstrated their ongoing commitment to our community. This year's recipient of the Regional Economic Impact of the Year Award goes to Solaris. Solaris was unable to attend this year, so we have a short acceptance video from CEO Justin Hebner. Good evening, everyone. I'm Justin Peter 
Carlos Hilarious said, I apologize if we're not able to be there live tonight, but if you haven't met our new CEO, uh, he's a great worker. He said something about company policy with the front office being closed, and that is all good. I don't see everything he said, but uh, all kidding aside, uh, we're almost to be nominated for this work tonight. We're, we're proud to see that a part of the year we're going to gather to go through a grand in 2020, and it was a, a bit of a crazy year, and, and for us, we found ourselves in a unique position be able to help people with the challenges that arose before the 2020. And the main reason for us to be able to rise to that occasion is the fact that we started investing in the Fiber Network back in 2010. And uh, we want to keep that Fiber Network completely. By uh, 2022, we had over $60 million across just for the local community, not including some of the expansion we've done to much greater area and make people all over the world. Um, but that network is what powers some of the technology that you need in order to be able to do the work and school from home uh, that, that required to be done, of course, this year. And, and that's helpful. Our focus was needed to get people to all the work. You know, it was events uh, that you were using in that situation. And, and so, uh, but as COVID continues on, uh, we look for an opportunity to be able to give something more back to our customers. And we consider maybe doing a real credit or something along those lines. But we, we saw there was a bigger opportunity. And, and in this situation, we could uh, give that back to our customers, but encourage them to spend it with the local businesses and not for profits in, in the community at large. Uh, and so, with that, we were able to trust on some of the logistics. And then that was the creation of an eight year play campaign that we did you know, over this last holiday season. And as part of that campaign, you know, we received a lot of calls and emails and cards and letters you know, uh, thanking us, but also letting us know how we did this. Uh, we're able to reinvest those dollars back. So it was exciting for us to see that you know, at a time of COVID, really, uh, really as a part, we were really able to come back together. And so you know, our thank you is to not just to this group, but also to the community at large, and which you know, it, it, it really was a pretty good working at Solaris. And so uh, with that, you know, we're all excited to get back to what our normal ends up being. But there's definitely some things that are here to stay, and you know, there's probably a few things that we even want to appreciate. So again, Our Citizen of the Year Award is sponsored by Cellcom and recognizes someone whose work, community service, and involvement demonstrate what it means to be a good citizen. Chef Fred J. Griesbach has been in the culinary profession for over 56 years. Fred is a certified executive chef and member of the American Academy of Chefs. He is a founding and active member of the local American Culinary Federation and Middle Wisconsin Chefs Association. He has received many awards in his career for community involvement, training of young people, and the advancement of the culinary profession. To name a few, the 2013 Jefferson Award, 2017 ACH's Lifetime Achievement Award, the best of Back of the House by Wisconsin Restaurant Association in March 2020. He received his second National Presidential Medallion in August 2020. And this is the highest honor given out by ACF and many more. During his career, he has worked in three four-star hotels, supper clubs, and his own restaurant, the former Swiss Cottage. Through his local chef's club, ACF Middle Wisconsin Chefs, he's worked on many community projects, including culinary programs at Lincoln High School. What makes a chef? In his case, it is the passion for food. From the early days, back at the age of seven, when his mom got him into baking and making things at home, he learned he loved to work with food. He said it was the white hats that inspired him. It was said in the early days that the higher the hat, the smarter the chef, as well as years in the industry. He attended culinary school at the age of 17, advanced up the ladder in his culinary career. The biggest joy he had was owning his own restaurant and motel. What began as a small coffee shop turned into the second largest motel, restaurant, cocktail lounge, and banquet facility for 200 in 1978. He's worked at other places since owning his own business and still enjoys cooking. 
After 20 years in the industry, he started giving back by training the kids. He's helped raise thousands of dollars for not only charities, but his pet project, Lincoln High School Culinary Department. Fred says this project could not be done without the support of the member and guest of the ACF Club. So please join me in congratulating Fred Griesbach, the 2020 Heart of Wisconsin Citizen of the Year. The Business of the Year Award is sponsored by the Town of Rome, which is awarded for the economic impact on the community, business growth, dedication to customer service, community service, and leadership and innovations to adapt to marketplace change to a Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce member in business for at least three years. Wisconsin River Orthopedics has always worked to find ways for their group to better serve the community, Wisconsin Rapids. This $6 million building project was needed for them to be able to expand on some of their boutique orthopedic services, including the ability to handle more complex cases and provide overnight stays at their surgery center. The growing volume of physical and occupational therapy services pushed them to expand their gym. In 2020, they added an advanced practice nurse practitioner with orthopedic specialty experience to give them a way to help accommodate same-day appointments for urgent referrals that do not require surgery. In addition to this, they hired several nurses, surgical techs, physical therapists, and other staff to support these expanded offerings, which represents about a 30% increase in their overall staffing from the previous year. While they would have preferred to complete the project without a pandemic, which created a number of complicating factors that ultimately delayed the completion, they are glad to see 2020 in the rearview mirror and have hopes for a speedy economic recovery for all of us in our community and all of Wisconsin. This year's recipient of the Business of the Year Award goes to Wisconsin River Orthopedics. To accept this award, please welcome Roger Dillon. Wow, this is uh, quite the honor and, uh, and really was kind of unexpected. Um, I really want to thank the heart of Wisconsin and the Chamber of Commerce and the community. Uh, we couldn't do this without all of you. Um, one of the things that I know that we always work towards with uh, our practice is to provide the highest quality health care we can in the orthopedic area to the community. And uh, that's one of the reasons we built the facility in the begin to begin with and why we've needed to expand is to, to be able to better serve this community that has given us so much. And so I thank you so much for this honor. And now it brings me great pleasure to bring up Phil Hartley. <laughs> So I would like to, again, thank everyone for being here this evening. Uh, I'd like to say it's an honor and a privilege to serve on the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Board, uh, serving as a chairperson this last year. Uh, even through the, the difficulties of 2020, the Chamber completed a detailed strategic plan to future grow our businesses and our community. And at this time, we're going to share a short video of our new mission and vision for the Chamber. In central Wisconsin, we are more than community. We are a network for businesses and organizations. We work together and support one another through partnership and innovation locally. So I'm an investor with the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce because I recently moved to the town of Wisconsin Rapids and for me, it was very important to get involved right away. And as an investor with the Chamber, it has opened me up to so many different avenues within the community that I never would have experienced just by moving here, opening a business, and basically doing it that route. 
good to be involved with the community and, and uh, all of that good stuff. Yeah, and the Chamber of Commerce is what's good for the community. We joined the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber because we feel it's a good thing for the community. It does a lot of great marketing work and uh, gets your name out, especially when you're a new business coming in and starting out. They have been, uh, they've been fantastic to work with and just genuinely you know, helpful in every step of the process. Because that's what makes it work. And that's what keeps us strong which is why all of us at the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce encourages everyone to support locally. They work with you as far as, you know, like when we expanded, things like that. When we do things here, uh, the fire inspectors are really good. They come in regularly, they help us out, make sure everything's up to snuff. And it's just, uh, Nakusa is a great place to, to have a business. You know, the city works with you really well. Yeah, I, I was real happy here. Yeah, I'm glad we, we came here. I, I just love the community in general. I grew up here. Um, it's great to be able to come back home and give back after getting an education and things and traveling around and bring my experience back to my hometown and hopefully grow within the walls of our community. Our mission is the driving force for our passion and dedication to the community. We are dedicated to strengthening the economy and enhancing quality of place. We believe that everyone, no matter what walk of life you are in, can live, thrive, and grow here. The area is a growing, vibrant community with strong commitment to long-held historic, cultural, educational, and collaborative values. By following our mission, our vision is to be the first choice of investors by providing resources, opportunities, and advocacy. One of my favorite events that happens in the community, uh, I guess for me it's usually the water ski show weekend, which is a huge event for our community. Uh, another favorite is always the uh, 4th of July celebration down by the river with the food vendors and all of that stuff. And also a big one is lunch by the river. Um, whether I'm working it or just going down there to enjoy it, they've got a lot of different variety down there every single summer and it's a great way to uh, see what other businesses are doing. Uh, I will say that I've really enjoyed Lunch by the River. I volunteer at Lunch by the River, and so being able to kind of meet everybody firsthand, um, you know, we sell custard, and uh, you know, the look on a kid's face when he's got custard on a warm day is great, and the events and the music and everything, the whole feel is just, you know, really exciting and really electric. Being an investor is about more than the dollar. It's about investing into your business, community, and in us because no matter who you are. I am an investor. 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 We, we are, are investors. investors. A big round of applause for everyone that participated in that video. This uh, ain't gonna scare Angel. I'm going off script. But <laughs> there's a lot of hidden gems in this community, aren't there? I mean, just businesses that have started up on their own and, and become something. And we've learned about a few of them tonight. Obviously, that received some awards that, that I learned so much more about tonight. But uh, another one in that video, Jacoby Custom Cues. Did, does everybody know what exists? in that little spot in Makusa uh, that sells $100,000 pool cues around the world uh, in, in obviously all different ranges of prices, but just an amazing little business that has grown in central Wisconsin uh, and uh, very proud that they call this area home. So as the video says, uh, we are all investors in this community, obviously, and investing into the growth of this place we call home. Uh, as a local chamber of commerce, we are dedicated to strengthening the economy and the quality of our place. The four strategies that drive the Chamber of, of Commerce include economic development, investor benefits, public policy, and community vision. Now more than ever, we need to collaborate, innovate, and dedicate ourselves to the future. As we move forward into 2021, thank goodness, we ask our investors, and yes, that's all of us here in this room, all of us watching online, uh, all of us in this community really, uh, to thrive with us, to get inspired, and be involved with this to make it an even better community to boast about. And as we've seen tonight, there's a lot to boast about. 
I'd like to thank the Board of Directors and the staff and all the Chamber of Investments for their support and encouragement throughout this really tough year for all of us. As the 73rd Annual Meeting and Awards Program comes to a close, I want to thank the sponsors for tonight's event, uh, including the presenting and premier wine sponsor, Urco Worldwide. Did anybody have some of the wine? All right, it was a good. Thank you, Urco. Okay. Annual dinner sponsors, uh, Domtar, Embridge, Ho-Chunk Gaming Casino, and Akusa Media Works, the voice of God. Mark Skiba over there, right? <laughs> As I call him. Uh, anyway, he's got a great new business too, so make sure you look him up and celebrate him. And uh, Paper City Savings, Solaris, Fortness CPAs SC, Payroll and Bookkeeping LLC, Wasaki Family of Companies, Metallico. I want to say Metallico because I want to put Metallica, right? Metallico, <laughs> sorry, and Anderson O'Brien. On your table tonight, you find a bottle of wine, again, from Urco. Please see the program for awards, table decorations, and the raffle table sponsors that we were just talking about, okay? Thank you to Ben Nikolai of Black Derby Photography for all the great shots he's getting in tonight's program. Thank you, sir. Uh, all of the winners from tonight, please come up by here by the podium at the end to get your awards and your photos taken, obviously. Thank you to Wisconsin Rapids Community Media for live feeding tonight's program. Information on when it'll air, you'll find in the insert of your program as well. I want to give a huge thank you to Michelle, and the crew here at the Ridges, can they hear our applause, please? <laughs> uh, the food was excellent, I thought. I, at our table, it was pretty funny. We had the four different selections with four different people, so we got to, got to see everything, so it was awesome. A uh, big heartfelt thanks to uh, my good friend, uh, Mark Skiver for him seeing tonight. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate your, your uh, just the quality of your work, as always. Round of applause for Mark, please. <laughs> Okay, and the big news, the raffle basket winners have been drawn and are posted by the raffle table prizes, so you can go look at that in just a minute. Table decorations, go to the person at each table that is the closest birthday to today. So you're gonna have to figure that out in just a minute, okay? Please leave the mirrors, I'm told. The mirrors, the mirrors are not part of the table decorations, okay? So, so with that, everyone, I'll probably get everybody's attention here, right? You hear that? <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. Please drive home safe. And thank you so much for coming this evening. Congratulations to all the board winners.